we start off with two beautiful Florida lobster tails. These are completely different than the one that you see up north on Maine. If you are unfamiliar with Maine lobsters, those are the one that has the beak claws. I've done quite a few videos on them and they are amazing. But I am a Florida guy and to me, Florida lobsters are the best. And one thing we love to do is to go diving for it. However, I did not catch these fresh. They were shipped to me by my meat dealer. And that is great because you can always have lobster available to you at any time. The first thing I like to do is to remove these flappers. And this is 100% for presentation purposes only. It is not necessary, but it makes it look good. And by the way, here's how you can tell if a lobster is a female or a male. This one was a male. And the reason was because the flappers were quite small. But if you take a look at this one right here, look how much larger it is. And the reason these are large is so that it can carry the eggs. So yes, this is a female. However, taste-wise, they both taste the same, which is amazing. Once they were removed, the next thing to do is to split them in half. Cutting them through the top part is much harder than the bottom. These shells are hard. Always do it through belly side up, it's much easier. And use a nice stiff knife. Using a cleaver makes the job easy. One of the things I've learned in the past about grilling lobster is that it will automatically curl when you put it on the grill. Sometimes you want that look, and sometimes you don't. But in order to prevent that from happening, you can use a chopstick. And it's pretty easy to do, just stick it all the way through and you're good to go. Now, not only this will keep the lobster straight, but it's also easy to move it around when you're grilling it. Just keep in mind that the chopsticks will burn. But once I was done, you can see my lobsters are almost ready for the grill. They are nice and straight and they will stay that way. To season it, I kept it pretty simple with only salt and freshly ground black pepper. The other things I'll be using to add more flavor to the lobster is a grilled lemon. When you grill lemon, they become sweeter and it produces a wonderful flavor. And let's not forget about butter. Seafood and butter were made for each other and that's something I'll be using to baste. Talking about adding additional flavor, I decided to do an incredible and amazing sauce. And these are all the ingredients I'm going to be using. Remember, exact amount and ingredients always in the description down below for you. One of the special ingredients on this sauce is saffron, which is pound per pound one of the most expensive ingredients in the world. If you are unfamiliar with saffron, let me explain. Saffron is a spice removed from a flower, and we use it in two ways, to deliver flavor for your seasoning, and also it's great for coloring. But it does cost an arm and a leg. So to start my sauce, I throw in a little bit of butter. You want to keep it under low heat and let it melt slowly. Then throw in white onions. Cook the onions until it's translucent. You don't want them to brown up. Then I threw in my favorite rosé wine. It is important to reduce the wine so that it burns off the alcohol. Once that's done, throw in heavy cream and mix everything well. Make sure to let the ingredients combine together. And then you want to do another reduction. Also, keep stirring it. That will prevent the sauce from clumping up. Right towards the end, you want to throw in a ridiculous amount of butter. This will make your sauce extremely creamy. And make sure you keep it under low heat and mix everything well until everything is combined. Once that's done, to finish it off by adding some additional flavor and coloring, I threw in the saffron. The longer you whisk, the more flavor and color you will have. And you want to whisk it until you're happy with the amount of flavor of the saffron. Be sure to taste your sauce as you go. If it needs anything at all, like salt, add a little, because you could easily overpower the sauce. But once I was happy with the taste and consistency, all there's left to do is to strain it. And once that's done, my friends, you have the most amazing sauce there is. I'm telling you right now, this will go good with any seafood. Lobsters, scallops, shrimp, basically anything. Our next ingredient is super controversial. It's called foie gras, also known as duck liver. And if you want to learn more about why this ingredient is so controversial, I'm going to put a link on the description down below. That explains how the harvest of foie gras is done nowadays. And that video will explain everything. But with all that being said, here's how I like to use it. The first thing to do is to cook it. And to do that, it only takes a few minutes. You want to sear both sides until you get a nice, wonderful color. Because foie gras is 99% fat, it sears quickly. And you got to keep an eye on it because you will literally melt on you and make sure you use high heat if you use it under low heat you would just completely melt but once they are fully cooked this is what they look like now all there's left to do is to freeze them so i can shave them to finish it off my lobster the next ingredient is caviar you already know caviar is basically fish egg and to be a little bit more specific these are salmon caviar if you've never tasted it this is an easy explanation it's basically a little bowl filled with salty water and as you take a bite they literally explode in your mouth with flavor. Some people love it, but most people hate it. But I'll tell you one thing, using it as an ingredient combining with other things, it develops a unique flavor on some dishes that sometimes work. And today I want to find out how this will do with the lobster. This is not going to be surf and turf without an amazing steak. And for that, I chose the king of all. This, my friend, is a Wagyu Marbling Score 9 Tomahawk Steak. 
It is by far one of the most impressive steaks you can ever cook. When seasoning a piece of meat like this, you must respect it. You don't want to add anything crazy. So for that, I only season it with salt, freshly ground black pepper, and garlic powder. You want to taste the flavor of this meat. Don't mask it with any crazy rub. One thing you got to remember when grilling a high-end steak like this is that it has a lot of intramuscular fat. And when that fat melts, it starts to break apart on you. And if you don't dress in it with butcher's twine in the end of your cook, you will not have a tomahawk left. But now that I have my beautiful lobsters ready, I'm going to be cooking them in indirect heat until I reach an internal temperature of 149 degrees Fahrenheit. For my beautiful steak, I'll be first putting a beautiful sear. Then I'll be using my wireless thermometer until I reach an internal temperature of 125 degrees Fahrenheit. But now I say it is enough talking and it is time to make the most amazing surf and turf you've ever seen in your life. So let's do it. Alright everybody, here we have my take on a beautiful fancy lobster angel together with a steak, yeah? Today the steak is the side dish, yeah? Really? <laughs> Which one would you like to try first? Lobster or steak? The steak? <laughs> <laughs> we steak people everybody, we love some steak, let me tell you something. But uh, yeah, actually it's a little bit about the, the lobster today, yeah? You can't, you can't bench the steak, bro. Uh, no, I'm just joking everybody. You can't bench the steak, the steak is, like that. The thing looks crazy. The steak is definitely I'm, not a side dish. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. I saw you inside and that presentation looked crazy. crazy. I know, right? Very crazy. fancy. It still looks crazy. It still looks fancy, right? <laughs> it's still fancy as hell. Yeah, but the one but, on top. But inside it was crazy. Bro. I would definitely recommend you doing something special, you know, like Mother's Day, Valentine's Day for your loved one and All stuff right. like that. This is not something you're going to have every day, everybody. There's no way. There's This is fancy, Angel. There's some this fancy stuff fancy. in here. I see caviar and stuff <laughs> like that. Oh, my God, the sauce. Hold on a second. All right. So, I got the so sauce. This is the sauce, huh? This is definitely. Oh, look at that sauce. Oh, man. <laughs> How can I forget the saffron sauce? Everybody? This has saffron. Saffron is a very special ingredient. Definitely forgot the sauce, everybody. Don't forget it. You went through all that trouble. Here. Here, look, look. Fancy like a chef, yeah? Oh, you fancy? Yeah, we're fancy like this. You put it in like plate. There you go. Huh? Okay. <laughs> All right, so here's what we got. We got lobster, caviar, a little bit of frog gras, a little bit of the sauce. Grab the sauce as well. Are you gonna go adventurous again? Whatever, I'll go. I'll try the. You the try everything. Well, you're gonna. But, but you're gonna put one little ball. No, no. No ball for you. No. You done with the balls? I ain't got no balls. <laughs> The most fancy lobster I've ever made, everybody. I Let's see if it's worth it. Yep, you do have some a little bit. I definitely sprinkle a little bit there for yeah. you. you. Ready for this? Cheers. Fancy lobster, everybody. Cheers. There's so much flavoring going on in that. Hmm? That's good. That is good. <laughs> what do you think? That's a I lot like, of flavor. I like to eat this with that. <laughs> with the steak <laughs> yeah the sauce is actually kind of smooth yeah it has a very very here it has a very oh you still have sauce it has a very smooth texture not overpowering you know what i mean yeah it's 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 just normal yeah it's like it's a, not not normal like oh, it's, just, it's like a nice balance it's like it. yeah exactly it's like there is not too much of one thing the sauce has a quite a unique flavor of the saffron if you don't have saffron available just don't put it it's fine but you feel that little weird flavor. It's like a different flavor. I don't know how to describe saffron, everybody. Yeah, but, but it goes with the, the sauce and the lobster, yeah. though. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, it goes really well. Yeah. Are you ready for the steak? I'm so ready for the no? steak. Let's go. <laughs> Where do I go? Mm, right here. Cheers, Cheers. everybody. Mmm. So good. Lobster is absolutely phenomenal. 
but it doesn't compare to a wonderful and desirable steak like this. It's got the charcoal flavor in it. Yeah. So does the lobster, which that's awesome. The fattiness of the Wagyu, everybody, as soon as you take a bite, it just literally melts in your mouth. And it coats your entire mouth with that it's fatness. It's super juicy. <laughs> it's stupid. so rich. And you gotta cook this one medium rare to rare, but you can't cook a steak like this well done. There's absolutely no way. Mmm. That it just is butter in your mouth basically. And then you bring in the crazy lobster, which is extremely sweet. You throw in a little bit of that sauce, and then you go to the next level if you want, and you grab that caviar. As soon as it explodes in your mouth, that saltiness just coats your entire palate. It's something wonderful, absolutely wonderful, but not something you can have every day though. Anyway guys, these are the results. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in any of the equipment I use, everything's always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care everybody, bye-bye. So we're out of here. All right, go guys. It's been real. Thanks. <laughs> Come on, bro. Let me have one more piece at least then.